in this day and age, we can say that most of the people alive are not directly involved with food production. Agriculture is definitely a specialized task and not everyone will have that talent but our ancestors had no choice. Years ago, most people were directly involved in food production in some capacity, whether they were rich farmers in southern China, dairy farmers in the Netherlands, diversified homesteaders in western Massachusetts, or cattle herders in Bantu-speaking Africa. The primary mode of food production during those days has always been agriculture and agriculture has transformed the face of the planet and allowed for an enormous explosion in the numbers of our species. Now let's get down to a little bit of history. Beneath a rocky slope in central Jordan lie the remains of a 10,000 year old village called the Ain Ghazal which was one of the first farming villages to have emerged after the dawn of agriculture. Around the settlement, Ain Ghazal farmers raised barley, wheat, chickpeas and lentils. Sites like Ain Ghazal provide a glimpse of one of the most important transitions in human history, the moment that people domesticated plants and animals settled down and began to produce the kind of society in which most of us live today. The agricultural revolution changed our species and our planet. As bands of hunter-gatherers began domesticating plants and animals, they quit the nomadic life, building villages and towns that endured for thousands of years. Originated in a few small hubs around the world, but probably first in the Fertile Crescent, a region of the Near East including parts of modern-day Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Israel and Jordan. The evidence for full-blown agriculture there Crops, livestock, tools for food preparation and villages dates back about 11,000 years. Hunter-gatherers who had travelled to the area in search of food began to harvest wild grains they found growing there. They scattered spare grains on the ground to grow more food. One of the remaining questions is whether local hunter-gatherer populations across Europe and Southern Asia learned about farming from afar and began their own farming culture, or whether Neolithic farmers migrated and brought agriculture and settlement with them. So who are these ancient farmers, where did they come from and where did their descendants emigrate? Ancient DNA has been isolated from the remnants of individual Neolithic farmers. Just six samples from an area that straddles the Aegean Sea between Greece and Turkey established a continuous genetic relationship between the populations and linked the earliest European farmers directly to those of the Near East. Using a similar approach, Rusaki et al. compared DNA from Neolithic farmers found in the Zagros region of Iran with DNA of modern-day populations, and they found that there was a distinct migration from that region towards the east. There was no evidence that these farmers contributed to the European spread of farming, but there was very strong evidence that they were ancestors of populations living in modern-day Pakistan and Afghanistan. A third study was done by Dr. Rish and his colleagues including Ron Penhasi, an archaeologist at University College Dublin and Dr. Lazaridis of Harvard where they recovered genetic material from 44 sets of remains around the Near East. Their haul included DNA from early farmers in Iran as well as from bones from another site in the southern Levant like Ain Ghazal. This concludes that the first farmers in each region were the descendants of the earlier hunter-gatherers. Some people believe though that cultivating plants may have started way before. Let us see why. In the 1980s, Danny Nadel, then at Hebrew University, and his colleagues excavated a 23,000-year-old site on the shores of the Sea of Galilee known as Ohalo II, and it consisted of half a dozen brush huts. 
recently, Dr. Nadel co-authored a study showing that one of the huts contained 150,000 chart seeds and fruits including many types such as almonds, grapes and olives that would later become crops. A stone blade found at Ohalo 2 seemed to have been used as a sickle to harvest cereals and a stone slab was used to grind the seeds. It seems clear the inhabitants were cultivating wild plants long before farming was thought to have begun. Many scientists have suggested that humans turned to agriculture under duress. Perhaps the climate of the Near East grew harsh or perhaps the hunter-gatherer population outstripped the supply of wild foods. Now the next question that comes up is did it all start in one place? The idea that farming began in a single population came from initial archaeological discoveries in one part of the Mideast, the Southern Levant, says Melinda Zeder, an archaeologist at the Smithsonian Museum of National History who wasn't involved in the study. But more recent excavations that there was an explosion of people tinkering with farming all over the Fertile Crescent. The early farmers in what is now Iran expanded eastward. Eventually, their descendants ended up in present-day India and their DNA makes up a substantial portion of the genomes of Indians. And the people of Ingazal? Well, their population expanded into East Africa, bringing crops and animals with them. East Africans retain ancestry from the first farmers of the Southern Levant in Somalia. A third of people's DNA comes from there. One interesting fact before I end the video. One new research showed that even after agriculture was established across the Fertile Crescent, people remained genetically isolated for thousands of years. Geneticist Garrett Helenthal said that even if they were talking to each other, they weren't intermarrying. But the DNA research also shows that this long period of isolation came to a sudden and spectacular end. About 8,000 years ago, the barriers between people in the Fertile Crescent fell away and genes began to flow across the entire region. The Near East became one homogeneous mixture of people. As with the invention of farming in the first place, there were no straight lines or eureka moments. People were just out there trying things, mostly with lesser rather than greater intentionality, hoping to make it from year to year and generation to generation. Accident and long-term experimentation followed by rapid expansion and then usually collapse to find the early cause of agriculture. And that is all guys. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. Do let us in on your, on your thoughts by dropping a comment in the comments section down below. For related videos, check our channel out and please do not forget to support us by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel. Till then, this is Halabella and see you soon in our next video.